so glad that you are joined us for our Christmas Eve worship service in person and online. We are celebrating the Lord's Supper today. So if you're worshiping with us online, please have your communion elements ready. And if you're worshiping with us in person, you should have received a communion kit. So please, uh, if you did not get that, let an usher know as you'll need that later this service. And then we, we also have our, in the pew back in front of you, we have our communion statement for you. And also there's a connection card. We ask you to fill that out, especially if you're new to Glory Day. We'd love to follow up with you. Friends, let us celebrate the birth of our Savior in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
reading from Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went down to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling cloths, and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you this day in the city of David is born a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
please be seated. Friends, there are a number of ways in which you can support the mission and ministry here at Gloria Day. There are opportunities to give through the mail or online or even in the offering plate. You can use that QR code sticker there on the pew back in front of you, the one that you can check in and it has our communion statement, but you can also give online through that. Tomorrow we continue our worship service as we have our Christmas Day service. That's going to be 10 o'clock in the chapel. It will also include communion. I invite our ushers to come forward. As we prepare to receive Holy Communion, we do this joyfully and we're reminded of the faith that we've been baptized in in the Apostles' Creed. If you join with me in confessing our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we prepare our hearts by praying the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I would invite the congregation to grab their communion elements, and I would invite you to hold them up. In a moment, we're going to consecrate or set these aside for a very holy and special use as we receive our Lord's body and blood in, with, and under bread and wine this Christmas Eve. So we hear these words that our Lord spoke in the night which he was betrayed when he took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And in the same way also after supper he took the cup. And when he gave thanks, he gave it to them and said, take and drink of it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant and my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. I invite the congregation to open up the wafer and receive our Lord's body. Having received our Lord's body, I invite the congregation to receive our Lord's blood. And now may the eating and drinking of our Lord's body and blood, and may that nourish you and strengthen your faith unto joy everlasting. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
We invite the children to come forward for the children's message. Gather real close and tight because we're going to have a lot of us here today. Let's stay right in this area here. Yeah. Awesome. Come on up. Squish real tight so everybody else can get in. <coughs> Got room for everybody? Awesome. Good afternoon. Merry Christmas. Well, first, before I even begin, did you see this really cool nativity set behind me? It's so beautiful, isn't it? So beautiful. Well, I'm super excited tonight because someone gave me this really fancy present. How many of you have fancy presents under your tree right now? Like have lots of bows and like, I'm guessing whoever gave me this gift there's something really neat inside here. You think God gave that to me? Oh, well, we're, we're going to look at it here in just a little bit. It's pretty fancy, isn't it? I mean, look at all the bows. And Do any of you, when you uh, have presents under the tree, do you, like, shake them? You're like, no. <laughs> Sometimes. Well... I'm wondering what's in this box. I'm so anxious. Are you anxious to open up your boxes too? You have presents at your house? Oh, how cool. Should we see what's inside? You think there's nothing in it? Well, let's see. We got the lid. We got some, looks, looks like stuff like wrapping around it. You might be right. There's like nothing inside my box. Oh, like this? Well, that sure doesn't look like anything fancy, does it? I mean, it's like brown paper and duct tape. There's something in it, you think? So it sure doesn't look very fancy to me. I don't know. We'll open it up and see. In this fancy box, there's something in a brown paper with duct tape. Oh, oh. There is something in here. Do you see what I have? It says, Jesus, the best gift ever. Do you know that when Jesus was born, all the people were not expecting Jesus to be born in a barn or laying in a food bowl, right? Where the horses ate. Exactly, right? He was laid in the hay. They were expecting him to be born in a fancy palace, in like a fancy box. Not something ordinary like a barn where cows and sheep and everything was born. And there's hay in there too. But here's the greatest news of all. That night, Jesus was born the best gift ever for us. He became for us the Savior of the world, best gift ever. And I know that there are some of you who are sad tonight, and there's moms and dads who are sad, or it's been a weary year, really weary and hard. Jesus, the best gift ever, was born for sad people and weary people and people who celebrate. He was born for each and every one of us to be our Savior. Best gift ever, not in a fancy package in a barn, sitting in a manger of hay, best gift ever. That's awesome, isn't it? Would you fold your hands and would you pray with me? And we're gonna ask moms and dads to, and big people to pray along with us as well. Would you repeat after me, dear God, 
thank you so much, thank you so much for, sending for sending your son, Jesus, Jesus the, best the best gift ever. Help us, Lord, Help us, Lord to, share to share that story with everyone. With everyone. In, the In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, before you go back to your seats, there are people that will be standing in the corners here with baskets, and they have a sticker that says, best gift ever, Jesus. I want you to wear that sticker boldly. Would you head back to your seats and grab a sticker for the people who are holding our baskets? There's, does, that's so beautiful. so the kids can find you and make sure they get back to you as well. It'd be great as well. Thank you for all our helpers tonight. That's fantastic. Thank you, guys. Go back to your seats. There you go. Hey, it's a joy to be with kids tonight. It is a blessing to be here with each and every one of you tonight. So Merry Christmas on behalf of myself. I'm Dan Shep, the senior pastor here at Gloria Day, and all our staff and our leadership. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for being a part of the worship here at Gloria Day as we celebrate the birth of Christ this Christmas Eve. I ask you to join me in prayer. Grace Holy Father, we thank you for today, for tonight. The birth of your son, Jesus Christ, we celebrate God becoming flesh and making a dwelling among us. So be with us, empty me of me, give me the words you want me to say, open our hearts and our minds to hear these words that we can indeed celebrate, rejoice, even though a world, weary world struggles. So be with us now, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, I love that. Tonight's a big night. Tomorrow's a big day. There's been a lot of preparation, a lot of anticipation, and probably even more stress to pull it off. How many of you, you show me hands, how many of you did Christmas shopping today? Come on. All right, there we go. I got a couple, all right. And I see some ladies, too, not just guys. That was like a thing for me. I love doing a Christmas Eve shopping, not anymore. Tonight, tomorrow's a worldwide celebration. It culminates the birth of Jesus. We celebrate. In a very special way. You see, there are many times in our lives in which we have had a special evening that a, something big happened the next day. Didn't even realize it. The world has witnessed many nights since the beginning of creation. And many of those nights have passed without anybody knowing anything remarkable taking place. Others sound pro saw profound changes in history. Think about this. It was April 14th, 1865. America went to bed thankful that the Civil War was now over, only to be awakened the next day with the news that President Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. December 6, 1941, there's a war raging in Europe and Asia. Americans are thankful that we're not involved. Only be to awaken the next day on the attack on Pearl Harbor. September 10th, 2001, it was just a normal evening. Ordinary night. No one ever expected the next day to wake up to watch the attack on America on the Twin Towers in the Pentagon. Personally, June 30th, 1999, January 26, 2005, and October 29th, 2007, a pretty special evenings with me and my wife as we were anticipating the birth of our three kids, Thomas and Caroline, 
and then Anna. How about, all right, how about November 4th, 2022, last month? The city of Houston is bustling with anticipation and excitement. The next day, three run homer by Jordan Alvarez, a dominant start by Valdez, and a four to one victory by the Astros bought Houston her second World Series title in Major League Baseball, right? That's right, that's right. I know there's some folks who aren't gonna like that, but tough, that's my sermon. You know, while there are momentous times on the eve of radical change in our world and lives, some nights have incredible circumstances that come to pass and the world never even knows it. Such is the story of that first Christmas. See, the night when Jesus was born was an ordinary night from eternal, from human perspective. The night before he was born, the, the shepherds were out there watching the sheep, the people in the surrounding village of Bethlehem, they worked hard all day, time to go to bed. Religious leaders are finishing their priestly duties. And there's this pregnant girl traveling with her fiance 90 miles to some obscure town called Bethlehem. And they're more concerned about finding a place to stay and rest because it's time. And at that evening, that, that eve of that first Christmas, they're preparing themselves as the creator of the universe. The eternal God is about to enter into the world as a baby, putting on human flesh. No fanfare. It was a lot not like any other night. But this child was not like any other child. In Luke chapter two, verse six, you heard earlier. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped in swallowing clothes and laid him in the manger because there was no room for them at the end. And for the month of December, we've been taking a closer look at some of the Christmas songs in Luke chapter one and Luke chapter two. But tonight I wanna to spend a few minutes looking at a very familiar and popular Christmas carol that we're gonna sing following this message, that oftentimes this message is taken for granted and this message is often unnoticed. This classic carol captures the harshness and the hope that collide every Christmas, and I say especially this year. I want you to think about this. This year's been challenging. We've navigated out of COVID and we're trying to figure out what a new normal looks like. And politics and divisiveness in our country are at the forefront of everything, and it's getting old. Some of us have lost loved ones. Some of us are grieving a shattered dream. Some of us, some of you are without employment. And some of you are just tired. And you're weary of what each day brings. Yet this carol proclaims in a weary world that a bright light dawns. That Christ has broken into our weariness and sorrow with the light of his son, and a weary world can rejoice for a new and glorious morn. Before I share the name and message of this carol, maybe you already figured it out, I thought it would be interesting to hear the backstory of this carol. You see, in 1847, a French poet, at the request of a church pastor, was asked to write a poem for the Catholic Mass. This writer was known more for his poetry than his faith and his church attendance, but he was honored to share his talents. And upon completion of the poem, the writer decided it was worth adding a musical score to it and enlisted one of his friends to complete the task. Initially, this, whole heart, this carol was wholeheartedly accepted in France, and the, church, and the song found its way into various churches. But when the songwriter walked away from the church and became part of a socialist movement, and the church leader discovered that the writer was Jewish, the song was suddenly and uniformly denounced by the church. Yet even though the church tried to bury it, 
the French people continued to sing it. And a decade later, it was brought to America and into the hands of a, a writer named John Sullivan Dwight. He felt this Christmas, wonderful Christmas song needed to be introduced to America because it told a timeless story. What's interesting, Dwight was a fervent abolitionist. And so he really strongly identified with the lines, truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break for the slave is our brother and in his name oppression shall cease. Dwight translated this song into English and it became known as the carol. Anybody know? Say it. Oh, holy night. Which only not it's about the song that is in 1906. Reginald Fezzeden, a 33-year-old professor at the University of Pittsburgh and former chemist for Thomas Edison, did something long thought impossible. He used this new type of generator and he spoke into a microphone and for the first time in history, a man's voice was broadcast over the airwaves. Shocked radio operators on ships and astonished wireless owners at newspapers who no more used to the taps and clicks sat awestruck with their normal coded dots and dashes heard over tiny speakers were interrupted by a professor and he rode and he read and it came to pass in those days there was a decree that went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, and all went to be taxed, each into his own city. He read the entire Luke 2 birth narrative. And then after finishing reading that Luke 2, he picked up his violin, and he played the retelling of the gospel of Jesus Christ and sang this French carol, O Holy Night, to reinforce that which he just read. The audience was captive to this new technology, sitting, listening to the message of the Son of God becoming flesh. So I want you to think about this carol. It's a clear evening in Bethlehem. On this holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It was a holy night, for this was the night of our dear Savior's birth. How's it begin? Oh, holy night. The stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. And then the author sets up why this had to take place. Long lay the world in sin and error pining. Taking us all the way back to the Garden of Eden where, where mankind sinned and broke that relationship with the Creator. All perfection was destroyed, and now Adam and Eve had to figure out how to live in an imperfect world with imperfect people. And they struggled, and they, it was hard. Banished from perfection to live a life of struggle. There was not a lot of hope, there was not a lot of peace, there was not a lot of joy, there was not a lot of prosperity. Life was an everyday struggle. The world was cold and uncaring, full of selfish acts of grief, pain, and misery. Understand that pining away means the wasting of a human spirit as it grieves, as it mourns, as it endures pain. The writer is talking about the desperate state we're in. And then the next line, until he appeared and the soul felt its worth. You see, there's a cause for hope. There's a cause for joy. That's why we're here tonight. The author writes, a thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. For yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Hmm. I, I think this line is so awesome because, first of all, yonder is underused. <laughs> and what this Carol is saying is Jesus is no longer yonder, distant, far away. He's here. He's come. Christ is born. 
So what is our response? The author in the carol says, fall on your knees. Not in terror, not in terror or fear, but in worship. In sheer ecstasy of what this Christ child means for all creation. It's what the shepherds did. It was the experience of the wise men. And then he goes, takes us to the scene in the, in the fields. Oh, hear the angels' voices. Remember, it was, they sang glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to all people on whom the favor of God rests. The author could have stopped right there, but he didn't. He said, the king of kings lay thus in lowly manger in all our trials, born to be our friend. He knows our needs. To our weakness, he is no stranger. There's some of you that need to hear that tonight. You're weary. You're tired. Maybe you're suffering through a trial. And he's not surprised. I want you to know the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, who is Emmanuel, God with us, is not surprised. And in all your trials, he was born to be your friend, to be your savior, to give you hope, to give you peace, to bring you joy. And so the lion says, behold your king, before him lowly Ben. And then the last, line, last stanza, or last verse, this carol talks about how we can live our lives. Truly he taught us how to love one another. His law is love, his gospel is peace. But I want you all to know that because of Jesus, we can, as a weary world, rejoice. We can be different, we can love one another. You see, his law is love, his gospel is peace, and because of that change shall he break. And in his name all oppressions to cease. Sweet hymns of joy and grateful chorus raise we, let all within us praise his holy name. Why? Because Christ is Lord. And we can praise his name forever. What I want you all to know about tonight Despite how crazy, chaotic, messed up, weary, whatever it is our lives have become, maybe Jesus enters into our world to bring us his peace. For God so loved you, and every one of you, that he gave his only son. That whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. Tonight, a holy night indeed. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, a savior. He's Christ the Lord. Merry Christmas. To God alone be the glory. Amen. Let's pray. Praise Heavenly Father, I, I thank and praise you for the gift of your son, our savior, the Messiah, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Prince of Peace, who's come to become one of us. But he grew up and he, he died on the cross so we might have life. He rose victoriously and now he lives forever with you that one day we'll join him. But until that time, Lord, remind us that a weary world can rejoice for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. So Lord, help us live our lives in worship and praise and celebration. In Jesus' name, amen. One of the best moments of this evening is the cracking of the glow sticks and preparing our candles. So I invite the congregation to, if you have glow stick, go ahead and crack that and get out your candles as we prepare to welcome our Lord Christ as the light of the world. A few instructions uh, just to remind you, uh, the lit candle as the ushers come through to light candles uh, remains uh, in position and then the unlit candle, you want to tip that uh, to light that. Uh, Vicar Steve and I will model that for you so you don't forget. 
And as this light gets passed around, be reminded that Christ is our light and our hope and our joy. So I invite the ushers as we light this Christ candle. God and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. And all things were made through Him, and without Him not anything was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it.
light of these candles illumine our faces on this most holiest of nights, we are reminded of Christ, our light here on earth, the eternal light who enlightens all of heaven, where there's no need of candle or sun. Rejoice. The light of the world has come, and the light transforms us with the brightness of his glory. So let us strive to shine with his light for all the world to see the brightness of his glory. For you are the light of the world, and a city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do we light a lamp and cover its light. Instead, they set its lamp on its stand, setting it on high, and it lights everyone in the house. In the same way, on this holy night, let your light shine in this dark world so that people may see your good deeds, giving praise and glory to your Father who is in heaven. Take this light, this light of faith and joy and hope out into our world and be his light and go with his blessing and peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace, hope, and light now and always. Amen.